Your Excellency. Today is about two stories. Before I come to the story of Twiga, we have another story. Story, the story of Tattoo City. And I want to applaud Stephen Jennings and the Tattoo City team. It is not easy. It is not easy, especially in this country, to close your ears to detractors. And there are many detractors. And this morning, Steve and I had a conversation and agreed that we are going to move until you tell us to stop. I know there's been a lot of, uh, you know, people to pull you back, left and right. But I think your government and the work you've given us is to really promote foreign direct investment, promote domestic investment, and create an environment that is conducive for doing business. And there's one thing you've also taught us, to look at the positive side of people, not the negative side. If you want to see the negative side of people, you'll find so many negatives. But I think it's possible to focus on the positive things that are happening. So I want to uh, assure Steve that we're going to sit together, as indeed the president has directed this morning, look at our framework for the special economic zones. We have got 13 privately licensed special economic zones in this country. And among them, very, very few have taken off. And Tattoo City is one of them. And I'm very proud of that. So we're going to work with Tattoo City to move, create a good benchmark for other, other private uh, uh, special, special economic zones, review the framework, and, and generally ensure that you are working together because this is a shared responsibility between, between the private investors and, and, and ourselves. And I dare say that those people who are doing nothing should not fault those people who are trying to do something. So ours as a government is to support those people who are trying to do something, even if they're not perfect. I always believe that every sinner has a future and every angel has a past. So we will work together and, and, and fix those few issues and, and be able to, to move forward. Yeah, Your Excellency, also we have got our uh, eight to nine uh, public sector uh, special economic zones, which you have given us a lot of uh, support. Uh, last week we were together in, in, in South Korea. Uh, we witnessed what uh, special economic zones can do. Uh, you've given us a lot of support and direction in terms of uh, creating the management unit for our Dongokundus, our Naivashas, our Saganas, and on, on top of that also the, the flagship county uh, um, in, in industrial parks that we're going to, to develop. So we work together both from the private uh, special economic zones and also the public uh, economic zones. Let me now turn to the story of Twitter. I'm sure most people here are seeing the story of Twiga, the story of Peter and Jonjo, and a guy who sold his matrimony home. And I see it differently, Your Excellency. The story of Twiga is the story of my mother. My mother educated me by selling bananas, ripened bananas at Kawangwari Market. And she could go all over Uganda and Sagana and Kirinyaga in Kisi to look for bananas. She didn't have two things. She didn't have the 16 billion shillings that Peter and Jojo has managed to, to fundraise to build to that to what it is. And she didn't have the technology. Otherwise, she could have been a bigger entrepreneur than Peter and Jojo. <laughs> and, 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 and among her customers, customers had to walk from set right, uh, to buy bananas from Kawangwara market. And I, I think my mother records, you know, she remembers you know, remotely seeing Madame Rachel Ruto buying bananas when, when you were staying in the right, you know? <laughs> because there was no mobile phones and there was no technology. Otherwise, if, if you know, my mother had those benefits, it could have been bigger. But this is a beauty of what is happening today with companies like Twiga, that they can be able to put together on a technology platform 120,000 retailers. What we've seen here, 20,000 square meter of, of aggregation space, which is now getting into, into industrial space, is nothing but truly remarkable. And that is why when you confirm attendance to this event, I called Peter and I told Peter, if you don't find a way of aligning this trigger of yours with our bottom-up agenda, I will be in trouble and I don't want to be fired. So we have to very quickly work up on a program and today uh, you are going to witness the signing of a tripartite agreement between my ministry, uh, Simon Chergui's ministry and Trigger Foods. And under this framework, as Peter has really mentioned, is that because we are putting up uh, aggregation centers, uh, micro manufacturing parks in every county, 
we are going to give access to Twira to be able to offtake from those centers. Today, Twira is only utilizing 30% of their capacity. For me, that is unfortunate, truly unfortunate. But there's some work that we have to do also. Twira have done their bit. It's now for us to do. Set up these industrial parks. I already have uh, an offer of uh, close to 150 acres uh, of uh, space, aggregation space, from the county government of Nyeri. I am going to have discussion with my friend Sakaja to look at if I can do something with 120 acres in Nyeri. What about Jamahuri Showground? 600 acres that we use for only one week a year. We don't want a, show, a, a, a trade fair for one week. We want a trade fair every day that is bringing money and providing access to, 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 to our market. And, and, and in it, we can do it. So other than that, uh, we discussed about the access to the Hasra Fund. Uh, today, uh, I'm told that uh, Twitter gives three days credit to the uh, retailers. And after the, the, that day, uh, the retailers can be able to access credit at the rate of 1% per day. And using the Hasra Fund, that story will be converted from 365% per annum to 8% under the Hasra Fund, the biggest transformation that our country will ever get. And the bigger story is that the Hasra Fund has a space for everyone. Like we started m -Pesa like a joke. Today everybody is struggling to find their space within m -Pesa. I look forward, within only one year, everybody will be saying I am Hasra Fund compliant because they'll have something to do the Hasra Fund. And what we're going to do with my brother Simon is to create a framework where everybody can be able to, 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 to hook up into, into the Hasra Fund. Finally, Your Excellency, we have agreed with Peter that uh, the aggregation centers which you are supporting us, the export aggregation centers in Uganda, in DRC, in South Africa, in Dubai, in the US, in South Korea, wherever you last week, that we can be able to use our technology driven distributors like Twiga, like Market Force, and others to be able to help us in uh, expanding our exports and, and creating a last mile infrastructure for being able to drive the Kenyan product. So, all these things is because we are a government that is uh, welcoming to investors that is willing to work with the private sector under the public-private partnership, I do believe that uh, we were in South Korea last week and we saw an economy that is 18 times as big as our economy in terms of GDP. Yet, some 50, 60 years ago, we were giving them money. Same population, around 50 million people, it is doable and we are going to do. In doing this, we are going to have some division of labor. What you have shown us is to focus on work. We are focusing on work. There are some other Kenyans who left to also make some noise and also they also have our people. So we just have to divide this work. Uh, we'll keep the focus, we'll keep working, and others will have to do what they are good at. So with those few remarks, may I ask that we be upstanding as we welcome the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, to make his remarks.